Hello everyone. My name is Lena Pöntynen and I'm the Director of Education in Finnish Technology Industries. This fall we gave all the Finnish first graders a technology education project called This Works. Today, when it is the Works Global Teachers Day, we want to share this technology education project for all the children and all the teachers in the world. Today I have two guests talking with me uh, about this. Uh, I have the Secretary General of National Board of Education in Finland and former Finnish uh, Minister of Education, Olli Pekka Heinonen. Welcome. Thank you very much. And then I have um, the Mighty Eagle of Robio, the guy with the red hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> former Mighty Eagle, but yeah. Ah, yeah. yes. Peter Westerpakka, welcome. Hey, thanks. Um, I want to start with Olli Pekka. Uh, what are your first impressions on this project? Well, I think it's an excellent way to combine the kind of kind of what we sometimes call in Finland phenomena based learning kind of being bring the different subjects of steams all together in a curious way kind of a learner centered way and i think that works <laughs> yeah that works <laughs> uh, Peter, you are here uh, because of your, uh, you're one of the founder of Fun Academy. Uh -huh. How is Fun Academy attached to this project? Yeah, so I mean, we have a uh, long experience going back to uh, kind of like uh, our days at Rovio and Angry Birds, so uh, around entertainment and fun, and actually making learning fun. And at Fun Academy, uh, we've been uh, looking at like early years education, but one thing that we have been doing there is we have created some amazing characters. So again, taking the lessons from the entertainment and games industry, how to make uh, the material and uh, everything uh, engaging and attractive. I mean, with games, it's always not only how to get people to download your game, but how to make sure that they come back, you know, every day and ideally many times a day. And uh, this is something that we have contributed from the Fun Academy side that we provided our uh, characters to the project to again make it look amazing and, and make it uh, appeal to uh, a big audience. And, and we all know that our kids have so many things that they can do, so we're competing for the attention for the time. So we wanted to make sure that this works, looks as good as the best games, as the best entertainment out there. And I think that the feedback has been you know, phenomenal. So, so it's, like, uh, it's uh, really uh, great to see uh, the kids enjoying you know, the content and the characters. Now when we talk about STEM or STEAM, it's a uh, st STEM calls for science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And if we add A there, it's the arts as well. Mm -hmm. Olli Pekka, what do you think, uh, why STEAM education is so important right now? Well, I think it's quite, quite, quite a kind of easy explanation for that. Because what kind of technology is, it's kind of, we are outsourcing our thinking to the surroundings. And I think it was Winston Churchill who once said that we kind of first create a building and then the building shapes us. So mm -hmm. it's an interrelation that the kind of um, technology and science we use, it also shapes us. So it's the question of what's the interaction between human and the kind of environment, the technology, and how we learn to cope in that kind of a world. And when the surroundings are changing all the time, it's more and more important for us to understand the technology, how it functions, how we can utilize it in a kind of a sustainable way whether we talk about economics or whether we talk about kind of ethical backgrounds, mm -hmm. I think the future is all about that question that how we can build the kind of machine human interaction, uh, a, a kind of a good tool for us to create a better future. That is very interesting because in this works you actually build a machine out of uh, recyclable materials. Um, and now we are talking about uh, first graders. In Finland the first graders are seven years old. What do you think, both of you? Uh, how important is it to uh, bring STEM and these kind of ideas to such young children? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that, I mean, young children are the best uh, learners on the planet. So, I mean, young children are uh, kind of like by default, they're very curious about their surrounding, their learning, their, you know, real like these sponges sucking in like all this information and everything from the environment. So I think that uh, it's uh, very important to start early. And also, I think what is amazing, if you look at these works that uh, the kids learn how to build all of these amazing contraptions and, and then, you know, out of like everyday items. And then you can like start understanding that, hey, actually I can build amazing things. I can do anything. And I think that we really need to encourage children and actually all of us that, you know, just to show how the world works and how these things, I mean, it's, uh, it's again uh, uh, so much technology around us and it's not you know, uh, even though some people say that, you know, like when you do the technology good enough, then it's like magic. But I think that it's important that you understand that actually it's not magic, even though it might feel like magic, but there's actually a lot of work, a lot of engineering, a lot of design, a lot of uh, thinking that goes into that. But also that you see that, hey, I can do that. I can create kind of mm -hmm. like the next big thing. And, and I think that it's great that we now have seven year olds, the first graders going through this. And it's like this, wow, I can make this work. And if you think about it in a national level, what do you think? We're trying to grab every seven-year-old to create something with, with friends. Well, I think it's a, also a question of kind of equality, mm -hmm. that we make it possible for every children in the country. Mm -hmm. and, and I totally agree with Peter, the, the idea that how children experiment and learn through experimenting and by doing things. When we get kind of older, uh, we kind of start thinking that we first have to think and then act. Mm -hmm. But thinking changing the way we act. But I think it's so kind of much, much more effective what children are doing yes. that they first act and they, through that acting, they change their way of thinking. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I, I, al I always, I have this rule, I always say that don't think, do think. Yeah. And that's exactly yeah. like, it's, it's so much more effective if you actually learn by doing. Yeah. Because we can all sit behind our desks and we can like punch something into the computer and create the perfect model, yeah. but then the world has changed and you know, exactly. it's not the perfect model anymore. So learning by doing is so important. And, and I think that that's what children do kind of like, it's, it's just like second nature. Yeah. Yes. We opened this website uh, in Finland last month. So we have there uh, all the materials in Finnish and in Swedish. And then we also sent each and every Finnish classroom these materials that contains uh, stickers, posters, and little uh, guidebook for teachers as well, how to do this. But now, this is in Finnish and Swedish, and now we are going to have it in English as well in thisworks.fi. But we are going to try to take this globally. Like I said, we want to give this to the world for free. What is this? Yeah, so, so I think that, I mean, there's no reason why uh, this wouldn't work like everywhere. And I think, uh, you know, I always say people are people and children are children uh, everywhere. So uh, right now we are already in talks with uh, uh, our friends in Kenya. So uh, translating this not only to English, but to Swahili. And uh, I think that there's no reason why this wouldn't work in, you know, uh, Kenya, in Colombia, so we're also working on the Spanish version, uh, and you know, all over Africa, all over Asia, uh, everywhere. I think children are children everywhere. I mean, that's like uh, the nice thing uh, about this. And, and uh, I think that uh, it's not only important here in Finland, in Nordics, but it's important everywhere that we learn by doing. And again, you know, uh, if you look at, uh, take, you know, like if you are a kid and you go to school in like Nairobi, I mean, exact same thing, you will learn and you will see that, hey, actually you can build the next, you know, big thing. And I think mm -hmm. that it's very important to have that experience. And then, of course, we need to have like great role models and great success stories. But it's so important to show the early age that actually there are very few things that are impossible and mm -hmm. you can make this happen and, and you can make it work.
And with these uh, imaginary machines the kids are going to build, mm -hmm. I think everything will be possible. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that um, if you think about technology and you think about the hard problems of the world, technology will be one solution if you think mm -hmm. about global warming or uh, recycling everything. Mm -hmm. And the children are the, uh, the key issue here and their, mm -hmm. uh, how, how their skills and their motivation to uh, mm -hmm. save the world. So um, our idea is to take this Finnish education and, and our materials to the world and give it away yeah. so that everyone can uh, enhance their STEM learning. Yeah. I think we have a very strong interest of our own that these kind of materials can be used globally. Mm -hmm. Because the seven-year-olds, they are the ones who are solving the wicked problems we are having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. when they are doing it, I think that they will have much, much more than we have had mm -hmm. a kind of global identity and citizenship when they are doing it. So it, it's not the question that, that it's a kind of national competition, but it's something that we and they need together to solve those challenges. That's the hope that we have. And also, we in Finland, we need the professionals to come to work with us. Mm -hmm. Not only to Finland, but also globally. Yeah. When we go to the how part and, and, and how, how are we going to solve these problems, if you think about Finnish curriculum that is uh, well acknowledged in all around the world, that we are very good in education, uh, ICT skills are not their own subject, but they are seen as one of the broad-based learning or one of the 21st century skills uh, part there. Is it enough? Should ICT skills or technology in general uh, be thought as its own subject? Or, um, and is it enough for educational quality that in Finland uh, the teacher has quite a uh, big autonomy to choose what they can do? Mm -hmm. So is it enough if, if it's there such as mm -hmm. 21st century skill? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, that <laughs> What is the thing that we do really need is actually integration. Mm -hmm. that, that, that we are, and we have been kind of very successful in splitting things into parts. And, and that's very useful. We need that mm -hmm. too in the future. But what we are a bit lacking now is that how we bring it all together. And as I said, I think STEAM is an excellent kind of way of doing it. And this kind of material is also kind of very, very valuable in doing it. Um, the kind of ICT skills in, in Finland, they are part of the transversal competencies mm. and, and probably one of the most used also ways of, of kind of how the, the kind of uh, multidisciplinary learning is done in Finland. Um, so I'm, I'm not that eager in kind of having a split, a one more subject in a long list of yes. subjects. But at the same time, I think we must work very hard that we get the teachers, the skills, the practices, the materials to integrate the technology and, and ICT skills. What you can do with what you know with that kind, it, so yeah. it becomes a competence, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and we are not there yet in Finland. We are not mm -hmm. ready. And I think this kind of material is a very valuable material for the teachers, again, from the equality mm -hmm. point of view. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think that, that that integration theme is super important because we really need to have understanding of like the big picture. And also when we talk typically about STEM, not even about STEAM, then uh, it can become very like siloed and, and uh, you think that oh, it's like technology and it's only like everybody needs to learn how to code or something like that. But at the same time, I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't use uh, music to learn computational thinking. Sure. And I mean, there's a lot of this kind of like yeah. bringing the art into technology and into this. And, and then 
I think that we are really starting to see, you know, uh, also uh, in the future we'll see amazing new innovations when we actually start looking at the big picture. Yeah. And, and I think that that is something that we, we uh, are doing with this work, that we're bringing something that goes across many, many subjects. I mean, there is music in there as one example. And yeah. it's not the first thing that you think about, you know, like, okay, technology and music. I mean, what is, you know, going on here? But actually it makes perfect sense because music is like code in the yeah. end. So yeah. it's, uh, it's not that different. And I think that this is a uh, uh, very, very important theme that uh, we need to look at these uh, uh, big like topics and not just that, okay, learn this little tiny area because uh, we need that and you need the experts, but we, even more we need people who have like the big picture perspective and understand the world. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm a huge fan of this works because it's uh, bringing it all together in a very nice way. Yeah, we had a lot of teachers uh, doing this project from the early design part to mm -hmm. the very end. Even I am a teacher and, and actually I did that music material mm -hmm. and coding. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so as a former music teacher, I was very keen to have something uh, from the art side there as well. Um, if you think about that, we might uh, stand here in mm -hmm. education bubble, me and Olli Pekka. Uh -huh. But if you think about the education bubble in Finland, mm -hmm. do you think that the teachers do, ha do have enough skills on technology and teaching the children technology on their own age uh, level? So, so I, I <laughs> always ask, uh, absolutely not. Because I mean, uh, do we have enough skills? And I, I don't think any not. of us have enough <laughs> skills like ever. So we are always learning. I mean, today you stop learning, you're dead. So I think that you know you have to learn. And I think that uh, this is no different for teachers. I mean, it's uh, again, the world is changing and, and, and uh, there are so many kind of like new uh, technologies, new things. So of course you have to, you know, keep up to date and you have to kind of like look at how you can apply the latest and greatest like tools and technologies, everything. Uh, so uh, it's very tough uh, for a teacher and actually for all of us. I mean, we need to do our job and we need to keep up with the latest developments, but uh, it's the only way. And I think that then it's very important that we provide the support and we can help with that. And again, with this works, this is one way of uh, kind of like you can test, uh, you know, uh, some of the things that we have here, you know, how to do, you know, like the remote, uh, you know, learning and uh, online learning. You can use this as kind of like a test case. Of course, we have now with the COVID-19, we have like a massive test case and we were forced to do this. But I think that uh, this is again something that uh, uh, we need to support the teachers and I think that it's great that this work was done by teachers for teachers because mm -hmm. I'm not a teacher I don't know like uh, or not you know mm -hmm. uh, a pedagogue and I think that it's very important that we involve the best pedagogues but also that we involve the best game designers the best mm -hmm. you know musicians and all of that so it's, it's not about like one thing but it's about bringing all the things together and again supporting the teachers in their job and I think that we can do a lot more and it's not just you know like uh, uh, kind of like the ministries and, and the public sector but I think that this is a great example of public and private sector working mm -hmm. together and again together I think is like a very very important word here that it's uh, you know we can't leave the teachers or the students alone we need to do this uh, together because you know, we are here together in the end, even though you're in your bubble, I'm in my yeah. bubble, but I mean, we can combine the bubbles and, and that's something that's very important, again, the theme of integration. That is true. And some, a funny thing about this is that this is a technology education project and you don't need any computers to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. So, so we try to do it in a way that the equality of education actually yeah. works in every school, whether it's in Kenya or mm. in Finland. Or Colombia. Or Colombia, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So uh, when we think about the teacher skills, what should we do to make them better learners every day, but make them better to teach the technology to children as well? Well, I think the question, technology is so many things, <laughs> yeah. because it's a skill, you can see it as a skill and you can see it as a kind of content that you are teaching, or you can see it as a kind of a tool to learn and teach. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I think we have, in all those fronts, we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. um, the, the technology is changing so rapidly that the traditional idea that you kind of go to school and you learn the things and then you teach others for the rest of your life, it, mm -hmm. it's kind of, it won't work. So in a way, we also, we have to kind of look at these things as a kind of an, from the point of view of kind of emergent learning, 
the idea that the teachers won't have all the right answers. They should be the best experts on the pedagogy side, understanding the children's need, but also they are learning at the process themselves. And, and that's like the idea with the multidisciplinary learning, for example, that, that you kind of create authentic content when you learn and authentic kind of solutions. And, and nobody says beforehand that this will be the outcome. I know the outcome beforehand, and now I'm going to make sure that you know it in the end too. That's, I think we're seeing much, much more of a change from the intended learning to the emergent learning. Yes. The 5th of, 5th of October is the International Teachers' Day, and the technology industry of Finland wants to give this for free to every single teacher in the world. Uh, if you want to uh, talk about the translation to your own local languages, uh, just contact Fun Academy and they will help you with that. Also, if you want to uh, take the paper back to all the schools, Fun Academy will help you with that as well. Thank you, Peter. Thank, Thank you, you. Oli Pekka. Thank you. And uh, I, I guess we can all, all say Happy International Teachers' Day. <laughs>